Good amazing viewers and subscribers, welcome to a brand new epic Star Trek ranking video for today. So for this video, I'm going to be ranking every single version of the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701. And of course, the NX-01, and of course, some other versions of the Enterprise that we do see throughout the last 55 years of Star Trek. So... When I was writing this list originally, there was literally 15 entries. And I kind of realised that one entry is basically just the same ship, but with different designs and different paintwork. So I've kind of put them two together. So now we have got 14, vers 14 versions of the USS Enterprise for me to rank for you all from worst to best. Now, this is my opinion and my opinion alone. And of course, at the right at the bottom, we have the ones I don't really like don't really think much of that i don't i really think these are like the ones that i'm like yeah i'm not too fussed about you know they're not they're not great enterprises they're just basically just part of the star trek canon and i just don't really give a damn about these ones basically right at the bottom and then you get to the top five and they're like ah oh, yeah they are the enterprise to me they're the best enterprises of the entire whole fleet and of course they bear the name enterprise so i will also I'd say, yeah, this this list is from worst to best and my opinion. But as I like to try and say this, this is actually also from my least favourite to my all-time favourite of version of the USS Enterprise. So for this, I will be saying one, when did the starships appear on screen and basically what do I think of them and the design. So let's dive into Maximum Warp and dive into 14th place. So in 14th place, I have the USS Enterprise NCC-1701 from Star Trek Beyond. Now, when I see this film in cinemas, I didn't really think they changed the much of the design back in 2016. But when I was really watching this recently and I watched basically all the Calvin timelines, this Enterprise has had a new reverb of the design. And it's absolutely flipping awful. I just do not like this version of Chris Pine's Enterprise. Now, before I get into what I do not like about it, the film itself is okay. Not the best Star Trek film out there, but it's okay. But this is not a great look for the Enterprise. Now, again, we still have the Constitution class of the vessels, but we have a very, very long nacelle, like nacelle pylon. So we've got the pylons that connect up to the warp nacelles. And what the hell? They are just too big and little flimsy. And same with the with the neck piece as well for the set version of the Enterprise. No wonder that basically Krill basically end up ripping the Enterprise neck off and basically the nacelles because it's just basically plain weak. So yes, they have to redesign it for that attack. But my God, doesn't it just look absolutely flipping ugly not the best looking enterprise to me and it's definitely the worst version of the enterprise i have to say so yeah in 14th place we have the enterprise from star trek beyond in 13th place we have the uss enterprise ncc 1701j from star trek enterprise season 3 as cindy prime just before archer goes and deals with cindy and of course, this episode, we don't see much of the Enterprise J. We just got the basically look of it. And my God, I just don't care for this one for a very long time. This one was a le my least favourite model of the Enterprise J. And of course, Eagle Moss did release this version of the Enterprise, but I do not have it in my Enterprise collection. And absolutely thank flipping God. I just don't like it. What's the whole point of a big, massive base of the saucer with little bit of nice little bit of um nacelle pylons with very very little digi nacelles yeah i don't really care for this look for the enterprise not great and it's not brilliant i'm sorry to say that but yeah definitely one of the two worst ones in 12th place we have the nx01 enterprise now this enterprise to me it is where the enterprises start to get a lot better the nx01 is very very small for a standard science vessel and during the course of Enterprise's run, we do see it end up taking quite a few beatings and a few batterings from Klingons, Romulan Mines, the Cindy. Literally, when half of the Enterprise gets nearly wiped out and destroyed because of the Cindy at the Battle of the Cindy Prime. And of course, this Enterprise was also made it back to Earth and had some good major refits and stuff. And when we last see the look of the Enterprise, she's actually in 
fantastic shape for the very last time we see her on screen until Star Trek Picard Season 3. I just don't think this version of the Enterprise, it, it, this is where the Enterprise does get good, but I just didn't really like the design back in the early 2000s. I, I was watching this when I was a kid back in 2001 to 2005, and I remember loving this ship at this point, and more to the point that I'm literally going back as an adult, we watch all of Enterprise over and over again, and I'm just thinking... What did I see in the NXO one? It's not a beautiful vessel. It's not one of the best vessels out there to bear the name Enterprise. And yeah, okay, it's not too bad, but it's one I just don't physically like that often. The series of Enterprise is quite good. I do like Enterprise, but not the ship. In 11th place, we have the USS Enterprise NCC-1701, Constitution class from Star Trek 2009, and of course, Star Trek Into Darkness. Now, for basically the two Chris Pine versions of the Enterprise, this is absolutely brilliant. I mean, the, the Constitution class is designed to be more bigger because of basically Nero basically diverting the course of the timeline by killing Kirk and destroying the USS Calvin, well, Kirk's father, George Kirk. The Enterprise itself is absolutely beautiful. I do quite like the design. It's not one I do go back to revisit quite a lot. I do have the actual model down here of the Enterprise from 2009. And that's actually it. Let's just look at that. It's not as bad as Star Trek, 2, Star Trek Beyond. But this one I absolutely do flipping like. It's beautiful. I like the kind of white hull plating that they use in space. I love the blue the sails that we see. And I actually do quite like it. Again, the only thing I have to say about this one is the actual neck piece. It does look like the weakest point of the vessel, but at least it looks a lot better than the one from Star Trek Beyond. I mean, that one just looks like a total mess. Yeah, so yeah, in literally another place, we have the, the Enterprise from Star Trek 2009 and basically Star Trek Into Darkness, I have to say. In 10th place, we have the NX-01 Enterprise Refit. Now, this Enterprise did not appear in any of the TV shows until the third season of Star Trek Enterprise, where we see it docked at the Fleet Museum. And of course, as we can tell, it's absolutely flipping brilliant to have. I do have the model of the NX-01 refit. I'm literally just going to grab the model quickly. So for the ones I do own, I will probably show you the models and put them somewhere safe. So here is the actual model of the Enterprise refit. And I bring it close to you to have a look. Look how flipping beautiful she is compared to what the NX-01 looked like in Enterprise. So that is what the NX-01 used to look like until you get the big major refit. And if I literally just hold my hands there. As you can see, we got a secondary hole. And you can see it does look like the crossover between the NX class and the Constitution class. So yeah, I do prefer the NX-01 refit design of the Enterprise. It just looks absolutely perfect. Out of the two NX versions, I absolutely love this version. I kind of wish we had a fifth season of Star Trek Enterprise so we can actually see this ship when it let, leaves dry dock and basically go into battle against the Romulans. I just absolutely love this version of the NX-01 Enterprise, or as they call it, NX-01 SS Enterprise. I just absolutely love the ship. It looks absolutely perfect. It looks absolutely perfect again and again and again. And just absolutely stunning. And I do have to say, I do love the NX-01 refit. In ninth place, we have the USS Enterprise NCC-1701C. Ambassador class. Now, the thing is with this starship, it did appear in the TNG only in the next generation. And it does look like a fantastic crossover between the Enterprise B, which is the Excelsior class, and up to the next one, the Galaxy class. I do like the Enterprise C's design. It is a bit of a smaller vessel. And I, it's no wonder why the Romans end up kicking its ass at the Battle of Defender 3. And of course, Captain Rachel Garrett does end up losing her life before the timeline kind of splits and they go back into a different timeline. And of course, Tashi is above the Enterprise C. But the actual design of the Enterprise A, it does show a fantastic evolution of the Enterprise going from the Excelsior class up to the between, between the Excelsior and Galaxy class. It's just absolutely perfect and I do quite like it and I do have to be honest with you, it's, I do have a little bit of soft spot for the Enterprise C. In 8th place we have the USS Enterprise NCC-1701B that we see for the first 10 minutes of Star Trek Generations. Now, the Enterprise B, it is a fantastic 
continuation of the Excelsior class. It is an Excelsior refit, as you can see. It just looks absolutely perfect and spot on and just absolutely flipping lovely. I love the detailing of the Enterprise B. It is just absolutely perfect. It just looks absolutely stunning. Just look how good that she looks, the USS Enterprise B NCC 1701. B. I kind of wish we had a series based on the Enterprise B after Generations. I just kind of wish we had like a Star Trek spin-off about the Enterprise B. I would have been so happy with that. I really would. And the, I really would have. So next place we have the USS Enterprise NCC 1701F from basically Star Trek Online and Star Trek Picard Season 3. Now, unfortunately, I do not own the model of the Enterprise F, but my best friend, Jamie Arrowsmith, he absolutely does. And when he showed me it, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Now, it's not one of my favourite 24th century vessels for the Enterprise, early 25th century. I just don't know what to say about the Odyssey class. I kind of wish we had a series of it just on its own with... A fantastic captain. I would love to have a series with the Enterprise F. But from what I've seen in Star Trek Picard, the design of the Odyssey class looks absolutely splendid. I have seen designs of it on Star Trek Online, and again, it just looks absolutely stunning. But I kind of wish that we kind of had more of the Enterprise F, not just the design of the ship. I kind of wish we had like a fantastic series based on the Enterprise F before we had Star Trek Picard. But I can only say that. Then, of course, next we have the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701G, from Star Trek Picard. And, of course, it used to be the USS Titan A. Now, this ship is a Nero, a Neron Constitution class. So, it's a kind of a bit of an evolution from the Constitution class from the 23rd century, added with the 24th, early 25th century tech. And, my flipping God, I just absolutely fell in love that with this episode with the starship when it was actually in the titan but when you get to the final episode of star trek picard season three the last generation it has a fantastic remake and the the ship's gone from the titan to the uss enterprise g and i really find that fitting that we've gone from a starship with a previous name to a new name like the uss yorktown for the enterprise a but this one, I just absolutely think it's going to be fantastic if we ever do get Green Litten and actually have to basically come on the air, Star Trek Legacy with the Enterprise G. I just really want that spin-off with the Enterprise G because I don't know what it is, but I just absolutely like the design of the Enterprise G. And I just kind of want more from it than what we see in Star Trek Picard. And of course, when it was the Titan. Number five. So in fifth place, we have the USS Enterprise NCC-1701 from Star Trek, the original series. Now, out of the original series, I don't like William Shatner's acting. I am currently in the middle of re-watching the original series. And i am literally just got onto the enemy within. And I'm starting to really appreciate the original series. I'm not too fond of William Shatner still. But there are bits I like in it. But the Enterprise herself... Just looks absolutely stunning. I mean, this is the Eagle Moss figure of the Enterprise, but I absolutely like her. I mean, this version of the Enterprise, it's not my personal favourite, but it's in the top five. It has grown on me a lot recently, but I absolutely do like it. It's, it's not one of my favourites. Well, it's in fifth place, so you can tell it's in one of my favourites, because I can say that, but it never used to be until I start to really appreciate the Enterprise of the original series. I like the whole corridor setting that we see in the original series as well. It does look very, very compact compared to Star Trek Strange New Worlds version of the Constitution Class Enterprise. But it still looks quite decent and I still put perfectly much. I actually do love the space shots this see. Not the original space shots, the remastered version. that I, have been, I am currently in the middle of rewatching all the remasters and they're just absolutely perfect. I really like it. In fourth place, we have the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701. Again, this one it is from Star Trek Strange New Worlds, as you can see from the picture. And of course, I do own this fantastic version of the Enterprise of Star Trek Strange New Worlds here. I own the actual large figurine. I absolutely love the Enterprise. This is the best the Constitution has looked to me. I do like the original series one. I mean, this for this one to be like above that version of the Enterprise 
just understand why. Is it because it is a bigger, a bit, bit bigger? And no, I think it's more very detailing and more very, very nicely designed. If I think if we had this version in the original series, I absolutely would love the original series. The Enterprise herself in Stranger Worlds, it looks absolutely fantastic and absolutely brilliant. As you can tell, I really love the model. As you can tell, compare it to basically the original series Enterprise. It does change basically from this version to what we see here. As you can see with the nacelle structure, it's still very much based the same. But you can tell that this one is the basically the next refit of the Constitution class. But to be honest with you, I absolutely do love Strange New Worlds version of the Enterprise. I don't know what it is, but every model shot I see in Strange New Worlds, it makes me appreciate and love more of this version of the Enterprise. I absolutely love it. Plus, she made a debut in Star Trek Discovery Season 2 and the finale of Season 1. But I just absolutely flipping love this version of the Enterprise. I just don't know what it is about it, but I just absolutely flipping love it. It's brilliant. It's amazing. Absolutely fantastic. I really love the model. This is, to me, what the one of the best looks for the Constitution class. One of the best looks for the Constitution class. I just absolutely flipping love it. Which is why it is in fourth place. I just can't get enough of it. It looks so splendid and brilliant and fantastic. It, the detailing of the model from Eagle Moss, again, just really pulls it away. But I just absolutely love the Strange New Worlds version of the Enterprise. In third place, we have... The, we, we have a tie for third place, a tie with the USS Enterprise NCC-1701 refit and the USS Enterprise NCC-1701 A that we see in Star Trek The Motion Picture, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, Star Trek III The Search of Spark, Star Trek IV The Final Moments of Star Trek IV The Voyage Jones, Star Trek V The Undiscovered, uh, Star Trek V The Final Frontier and Star Trek VI The Underdiscovered Country. So... The reason I've put these two in tie, tie, like in proper ties with each other, is because basically it's just basically the same ship, but as you can tell by the models and the imagery, they just basically look exactly the same. They look the same size, just different cating of the paint, different detailing. And these are from Eagle Moss, by the way. But when I was watching this and compare the Enterprise refit to the Enterprise A, it just looks absolutely perfect. I really love the whole dynamic. Now, this is the best version the Constitution Class Enterprise has ever looked. Apart from Strange New Worlds. That is basically why I've had to put this version of the Enterprise above the Strange New Worlds one. Because I just absolutely love it. I mean, I love the whole new warp designs where basically we've gone from the big slender nacelle into a kind of slimmer version. And it's more sleeker to go into warp drive than anything else. I just absolutely love this Enterprise and the two best films for me to say, one that really does visualise how great this vessel is, is basically Star Trek Trinidad Wrath of Khan and Star Trek 60 on Discovery Country. I just really love the Constitution Class refit. I don't know what it is about this vessel. Yes, I know it's just a Constitution Class. It's just a remake of the, basically the one that we see in the original series. But I absolutely love the refit. I don't know what it is about it. I just think this is the best version the Enterprise has ever looked. Of the construction class. I just absolutely love it. Which is why it's in third place. In second place. Now I'll probably get shot for not putting this one in first place. But I absolutely love my first place spot. And if you can't tell what this is going to be. You're probably going to get your phasers out to kill me. But I do have my own phaser. It's on the shelf. So in second place we have the USS Enterprise. NCC-1701E. From Star Trek First Contact. And Star Trek Nemesis. And insurrection. I don't know what it is about the Enterprise E, but I just. I, some people have put the Enterprise E in the top spot, if you could tell. This is the actual model from Eagle Moss. I don't know what it is about the Enterprise E. It's very, very. It's like a proper battleship. It's very, very slimmer to the Enterprise D, but it's more longer with wider nacelles. And of course, the Enterprise E was basically designed to battle against the Borg. Now, the Sovereign class vessel looks absolutely beautiful in basically in 4K when I brought, I've got the 4K of the films. And the Enterprise A just looks absolutely perfect in 4K and even in Blu-ray. But it's not my favourite Enterprise because my favourite Enterprise is the one that I kind of expect like a specialised with my childhood. Because I kind of grew up watching TNG, DS9, Voyager. But I just have to say the Enterprise E for the Sovereign class... 
it's very good in battle against the Borg and, of course, the Sonar and the Riemann Senator, the, the Senator Vessel. But I just can't put it in number one because I know some people have, have put the Sovereign Class Enterprise into the first place, but I just don't know what it is. I just can't put it in first place because I don't know if it's because the 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 child the child fan in me would be absolutely so heartbroken and gutted that I haven't put the my favourite vessel in second place. But I don't know what it is. I just absolutely do like my number one spot. But the Enterprise E, yeah, you know what? It is second best after my all-time favourite starship of to better name Enterprise. So if you probably guessed it, my favourite Enterprise is of course the USS Enterprise uh, NCC 1701D. Now of course I do own the Eagle Moss figure, the model, but for this I'm going to have to show you my fantastic pride and joy. Now this is my favourite vessel to bear the name Enterprise, the Galaxy Class of the Enterprise. I just absolutely love the galaxy class starship i don't know what it is yes it is a battleship it was the flagship of the federation from the year 2364 to 2371 again i just love it i really love it i just don't know why i have seen people say oh i don't love the galaxy class starship i don't know why i flipping love this vessel the size of it, it yes it is a bit bigger than the sovereign class but the sovereign class is so much wider compared to it. I just absolutely flipping love the Enterprise D because I ha have so many great memories of the Enterprise D coming across the Borg Cube, coming across the Romulan Warbirds, Klingon, the, Kling the Klingon Vulture classes, and of course the Cardassians Galore classes vessels. I just absolutely flipping love the Enterprise D. And now there is two versions of the Enterprise D. You got this version, and of course you have the version from the alternate future with the free walk nacelles, but I kind of have to put the free warp nacelles to a side because even though it does appear and it doesn't actually appear again, it doesn't become proper, proper in the actual proper Star Trek timeline. It's just an alternate timeline. But the Enterprise D, she's just absolutely perfect, beautiful. I don't know what it is about the Enterprise B, the Enterprise D. It just looks so great when you watch it on screen with Patrick Stewart's voice going space, the final frontier, and you just kind of got that fantastic pan out. I really love the Enterprise D. I know some people will say it's not my, for me, it's not my favourite Enterprise, but that's fair enough. But for me, this has been my favourite version of the Enterprise ever since I was childhood, being born in 1996. You would have say, oh, the Enterprise E was my favourite because of First Contact. And of course, I was three years old when Insurrection came out. And then, of course, I was literally like six years old when Star Trek Nemesis came out. But to me, this is... Honestly, the best version of the Enterprise I have ever seen. I don't care what people say about it. I I mean, this starship actually appeared in Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Generations until its destruction. And of course, it was remade, rebought with parts of another Galaxy Class vessel to bring the Enterprise D back into battle against the Borg Queen in the final episode of Star Trek Picard. Well, in the final two parts of Star Trek Picard Season 3. I just really, really really love the Enterprise D. It is honestly my favourite vessel. Now, when we actually had the Starship going to hangar, into the Hangar 12 in, you know, Star Trek Picard, I honestly thought we were going to see the Enterprise E. I was literally excited to see the Enterprise D, but my God, the inner child in me came rushing out of me because of the fantastic sight of the Enterprise D once again. This is honestly my all-time favourite Enterprise. I don't know if what you your personal feelings are about the Galaxy Class. Some people say it looked a bit big, it looked a bit ugly compared to the to the Connie, to the, the Constitution class, but to me, this is my Enterprise. This is honestly the best Enterprise to me. I don't know why. I think it's just because I absolutely love watching TNG, but I love the basically the fantastic the fantastic shots of the Enterprise D. I just love the Galaxy Class vessels. And of course the Enterprise D doesn't show up in Deep Space Nine or Voyager, but it does show up in basically in Star Trek the Deep Space Nine. Not the Enterprise, but the Galaxy Class, the actual this whole vessel, does appear quite a few times because we see a whole fleet, nearly like a whole fleet of them in the Dominion War. We see them in Voyager where basically where Voyager comes flying out of the Borg sphere. 
and the Enterprise, the basic Gal the Galaxy class is there to basically meet them and escort them back to Earth. I just absolutely love the Enterprise D. I know some people don't, but I just absolutely love that Enterprise. So that is me ranking every single version of the Enterprise from worst to best, in my opinion. And of course, my number one has got to go to the Galaxy Class. I just love the Galaxy Class so much. I don't know if it's to do with my childhood, because I, really, I did grow up watching TNG an awful lot with my dad. And it's just one of those ships that literally just bury into my mind. And every image that I see on Google of the Enterprise D, it just looks beautiful and fantastic again and again. So let me know in the comments, how do you rank every version of the Enterprise? Let me know in the comments. Please do like, subscribe and share and join me for more awesome Doctor Who and Star Trek content. And of course, live long and prosper.